You will remember, Mr. Dodd, that I asked you about the paper which Mr. Kent was reading. Had it been The Lancet or the British Medical Journal, it would have helped me. It is not illegal, however, to keep a lunatic upon private grounds so long as there is a qualified person in attendance, and that the authorities have been duly notified. Why, then, all this desperate desire for secrecy? Once again, I could not get the theory to fit the facts. There remained the third possibility, into which, rare and unlikely as it was, everything seemed to fit. Leprosy is not uncommon in South Africa. By some extraordinary chance, this youth might have contracted it. His people would be placed in a very dreadful position, since they would desire to save him from segregation. Great secrecy would be needed to prevent rumours from getting about and subsequent interference by the authorities. A devoted medical man, if sufficiently paid, would easily be found to take charge of the sufferer. There would be no reason why the latter should not be allowed freedom after dark. Bleaching of the skin is a common result of the disease. There we have it. The theory was a strong one so strong that I determined to act as if it were actually already proven. When, on arriving here, I noticed that Ralph, who is in charge of bringing meals, had gloves which are impregnated with disinfectants, my last doubts were removed. A single word showed you, sir, that your secret was discovered, and if I wrote rather than said it, it was to prove to you that my discretion was to be trusted.'